In Singapore tonight, our special report on the status of women continues now with a focus on toxic masculinity. It is the notion that men should behave in so-called manly ways, like being strong and dominant. The term surfaced during a national conversation on women's development, which critics are saying it promotes a misogynistic culture. Anna Famshai gets involved in some locker room talk. What exactly is toxic masculinity? Where does it occur? And how does it affect people? I get insights to these questions from two gender equality advocates. Okay. Okay, house clap. Shake our hands. Hello, guys. Hello. Please have a seat. Hello. Thanks for joining me today to start the ball rolling. Can you share examples of when you were caught in uncomfortable situations relating to this issue? Every time your parent tells you not to cry, to man up, it is the countless number of incidents that affect men that create this issue of toxic masculinity. Because when it's repeated and all, we assume it to be normal. When I was in uh, national service, right, I was a bit more effeminate. I wasn't conforming to the typical idea of what masculinity is. The way the other boys were making fun of certain things that I say, and that until the day that I decided, you know what, I want to fit in. And the first time I started to swear, they were like, whoa, dude, I cannot believe that you have this in you. And I got accepted in. I'm ashamed to say that I did that, you know, but it, to me at that time, it was like about survival. Can you also maybe elaborate on what are the long-term implications of such behaviours? Like when you're told to be emotionally stoic, you don't know how to express your emotions. So people end up exploding, you know. It could be a major cause for domestic violence issues, even in the sense of anger. You're not told how to express it in healthy ways, mm. which is the main reason why it is quote-unquote toxic, mm. because it is, it is literally not just hurting the people around you, but also hurting you yourself. I have seen how some men, you know, they, even though they are struggling, they refuse, they refuse to seek help, you know. I could see it stem all the way from childhood. How do you think toxic masculinity can affect women as well? Take that. <laughs> Uh, okay, like, for example, in terms of sexual violence, like the idea that men have to be so dominant in every aspect of life that unfortunately when it comes to sex, that it also has to be that men are supposedly dominant, that men can supposedly breach consent. There are guides out there on how to manipulate women so that they can be dominant over them. I think what is toxic uh, for a long time was that we are bombarded with a lot of materials for us to misbehave. If we start young and destabilize the norms from young, then we can imagine a better society overall that doesn't have to deal with the toxicity from toxic masculinity. Let's cross over to Aleph now for more. Hubi will tell us more about how one organization is doing its part to weed out toxic masculinity. Aleph. Thanks, Steve. When the concept of toxic masculinity was brought up in Singapore, national service was identified as a setting which gave people a so-called hyper-masculine experience. And elsewhere, sports clubs have also been part of the conversation. From verbal jibes to cyber abuse, I sat down with the Singapore Rugby Union to find out how it deals with such matters. I'm here to read some mean tweets. Women should not play sports anymore and just stay in the kitchen. Uh, I clearly do not agree with this. Women should not play rugby union, rugby league or football. They are not really capable. Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, are you capable then? <laughs> Why must male athletes cry on television? If you've been an athlete or you worked hard and it doesn't go right, you're going to cry. It's, it's emotional. Try some sports. I'm sick of seeing male athletes cry. Suck it up. If cheerleaders can suck up hate, hard work, determination, fear and rejection, then dot dot dot. Oh, that's a... An interesting one. Usually men crying is it's quite a good thing, right? Shows that we're sensitive. I love seeing F1 male fans getting upset over F1 female fans because they think that this sport is only for men. Is it because it's like driving? Is it because it's just cars? 
sport has always been historically a very masculine thing. It's been a way to show like how men are like um, strong, stronger. It's very degrading that like why can't we play a sport as well as men? It creates um, a stereotype that a man has to uplift in terms of playing a sport, that you have to be better than women. Rugby's always been that, that sport that's perceived as for people who are super tough. In the past, Singapore rugby has seen occurrences of players being told to man up or to continue playing even when they've suffered serious injuries. But it has since made strides to make sure players are better protected against such practices. Try which That includes making sure that referees and coaches are aware of injury risks, especially during competitions. That's where this blue card comes in handy. The blue card is used by the referee so that if they have uh, recognised that someone may have a concussion, we issue them with the blue card and they're straight away removed. So it takes it out of the coaches or the parents' hands to ask them to push through that, that pain barrier, uh, take them off the field, check them to make sure that they are safe. Players now have a safe space to report cases like abuse or inappropriate behaviour after a safeguarding committee was launched in July last year. Women also have a say on how to take the organisation forward with the formation of a women's development committee. We discuss how we can improve growth within the women's game, both on the field, but then also at administrative level where it's usually a group of guys talking about how the sport is going to grow. We just want to make sure that there is a voice there to represent women's rugby. This is also to ensure that there's a fair distribution of resources for both men's and women's rugby in Singapore. Toxic masculinity can certainly impact both male and female athletes' well-being. Rugby really is for all and that it needs to be a safe environment for all athletes to be a part of. Singapore Rugby Union's Douglas Dunapal joins me live along with Gender Equality Advocate West Executive Director Corinna Lim. Thank you both for joining me tonight. Douglas, first to you. Does Singapore Rugby Union have more plans to weed out undesirable gender-related behaviour? Well, Alif, uh, before the pandemic, SRU was already planning an office ethics and behaviour course for the execs, noting that our workplace also includes the training grounds or playing fields and interactions with the wider rugby community. So this would have uh, included bringing in a trainer for scenarios uh, in which appropriate dressing as well as the way we speak and the things we say to both males and females are addressed. We wanted to be proactive uh, we took a look at it and we thought, we can't change the past, but we can adjust our present to correct the future. The second initiative or program, which will need constant support, and as are you working with stakeholders such as World Rugby, Asia Rugby and Sport SG, would be changing coaches' ethos or coaching ethos and mindsets. It's not all about winning, but holistic development of a balanced individual. Mm -hmm. If a kid starts to cry, the immediate response should not be stop crying, man up, it's just a scratch. Even I'm guilty of that with, uh, with my kid. It should be understanding what is causing his pain or trauma. And this is also relevant sometimes for more mature athletes as well. If we don't do it, it gets passed down until someone is ready to feel it, heal it, and let it go. Uh, we at SRU, we felt that now was the right time to do so. And Karina, what more needs to be done for Singapore to address toxic masculinity? I think there's so much that can be done because this is such a new topic in Singapore. And, you know, though the, uh, the, the gender review um, has really started this conversation. So um, the, in the first place, we don't have too much data about this. This is quite a new term. When I first uh, talked about it, a lot of people said, oh, you know, you're, you're saying that men are bad. I said, no, men are not bad. It's toxic masculinity norms that we are actually, that we have to tackle, right? So what can be done? I think parenting, a lot of the uh, earlier uh, clips showed people saying that their parents told them to man up, teachers told them to man up. So all the adults actually, if they can be trained to really think about this in a different way, that manning up, it has uh, a lot of negative connotations that are bad for men if, as they grow up. Um, also, uh, you know what what uh, like rugby is is doing 
traditional men's spaces can do a lot to actually promote respect for women, right? And so uh, I think what Rugby Singapore is doing is fantastic. Um, also, uh, in the education system, uh, the sex ed that uh, Minister of State Shun Shaling talked about, in, as part of the that education, we can really talk about men's um, uh, gender, right? Men's and 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 boys and girls, men's and men and women's roles in the family. Uh, so there's a lot that can be done, and and I think we have to deal with this idea that it. It's not being a man doesn't mean having power over women, having many sexual conquests, and that is still a common idea. Maybe not spoken in a polite uh, society, but I know in men's spaces, there's a lot of this sort of locker room talk, and we must certainly deal with that. But first, I think we do need to get a, a masculinity study to actually. Uh, investigate this more and to see how this is happening. So I'm really glad that we're actually talking about this on mainstream news. This is a really great start that we've started this conversation. We've been talking about women's development for a long time. We need to also talk about healthy development for our boys and our men. Well, thank you both for joining me tonight. Uh, Steve, back to you.